Hello to all my friends out there. Hi, you guys. I hope everyone is doing okay. I wasn't planning on doing this video. It just came to me. And I was watching uh, prepper videos and I thought, you know, I think I have something to say on this subject. I'm drinking tea. I buy tea uh, 100 bags for a dollar. This is a cheap beverage. So to start, I have two things. One's me, one's my ex-husband. Okay, one of my brothers has a very, very dangerous job. And I said to him, my God, you know, something's going to get you killed. You have to promise me you will go with the gut. So, I mean, you know, this was like our way of life, something danger all the time. So he was about 19 and he was going to get married. And I said, I think you're too young to get married. And he said, remember when you told me to go with the gut? <laughs> so, you know, there's no arguing, but you have to train yourself literally to go with the gut. I mean, if you get the feeling something is not good, go with it. And then, um, so you might be saying, you don't look like a prepper. You don't live in a trailer out in the sticks and you don't have any chickens. I don't need chickens. I go to Lulu's and I buy eggs 20 for $2.99. The other thing that has to do with prepping, that's me, is there's three situations. There's bad, there's bad, bad, and there's really, really bad. And so when it's really, really bad, which it's been many times in my life, I would pray to God and I'd go, this is really, really bad and you have to help me. I cannot do this. And I would pull superhuman strength out of a bag somehow and do things. And people would say, how do you do it? That's how I did it. I would pray to God to help me. Then there was my ex-husband between the two of us, right? My ex-husband was in the infantry, and I think his sister summed it up the best. And so they said, would anyone like to say anything at the funeral? And I looked at my son, no, you know, there's no sense for us to get up there and start blubbering or something. But his sister goes up there, and she said, I had a stroke. And she did. She had a stroke. And she called Mike, and she said, Mike, I don't know what to do. And he said, you're just going to have to put one boot in front of the other and you're just going to have to get through it. And that came from the infantry when he was in the Vietnam War. And when I first married him, rule number one, no crying. It doesn't do any good. And that is really, really true. So that's my input from the two of us. And, you know, you're prepping in case things get bad. What are you going to do? Okay, so now... I was watching these prepping vi videos and I go, yeah, yeah, that is pretty good. Number one thing, cash. Number two thing, credit. Number three thing, passport. That is why I got the vaccination. And so what I did is I got the Johnson & Johnson vaccination because I said, I want to do this in the easiest way possible. The least stuff can go wrong to comply in case they require a, pa a, a COVID vaccination to travel or get a passport. And then um, car and gas, the ability to maintain my car and gas. I think those are very, the most important uh, prepping things you can possibly do. You know, well, yeah, yeah, well, what if, if, you know, we're under attack, well, then we're gonna put one, boot in front of the other and a weapon if you can but uh during world war ii a lot of the jews could have gotten out but they didn't think that it was going to get that bad and they stayed and lots of really bad stuff happened i mean they had the ways and the means to get out but they didn't get out because they thought that it couldn't be that bad and it was so what is going to get you out is money. Okay, during the COVID, uh, when it first started, there were areas in this city that were absolutely COVID-less. And then there were other areas where it was an issue. And I lived in La Mesa, and that's where we had the riots and the looting. So I said, okay, 
long before this gets really out of hand, I am out of there. So I'm living in a much better area now. Okay, so now, now we're getting into the, the food storage and prepping. So you might be saying, oh, well, what do you know? Well, some of us old ladies know some stuff. Okay, so now I'm skipping ahead here. Okay, on my dad's side was the farmers. On my mom's side was the ranchers. So what does that mean? It's not food storage, it's not prepping, it's a way of life. The farmers bought food and provisions from crop to crop and the ranchers went, went from herd to herd. You couldn't be like going, I have so many uh, provisions. No, you needed enough food to last you. So what we're doing is we're prepping in a way that is a way of life that we can go in, we can eat this stuff, and we can survive for a year, for two years, for five years. We're going to figure out how to do that. So you might be saying, you can't do that. I had uh, these uh, lawyers for clients, and, we were and they used to defend killers. And I said to the lawyer, I go, that is utterly impossible. He goes, no. If it's ever been done once, it's not impossible. So it is not impossible for you to store food because if it's ever been done by any other living individual, it's not impossible. It's quite possible. So we're going to be thinking about things in that way. And the farmers and the ranchers were not rich. Uh, on the ranchers, though, the ranchers would buy provisions for the whole year for the ranch the animals and the ranch hands, the ranch hands would be paid $20. They would go into town. They would squander their, um, their $20 on baths, <laughs> drinking and such, and they would have zero money at the end of the trip in to take the cattle. But the point is, is we're going to be good stewards with what provisions we have and we're going to say no this thing is not going to catch me i'm going to get through this okay they're calling this the year of the shortages i thought oh great okay we have the price of corn going up and you know oh, that's bad enough except they use ethanol in approximately 10 percent of the gas and then there's corn syrup which is a sweetener that isn't everything so the price of everything is going up beef we had the cyber ransom attacks okay turns out there was 40 of these attacks the two worst were colonial gas um the the beef the biggest beef producer and so they pay the ransoms off because it's just you know it's worse if there's a hold up in the the outgo so the beef, we can expect um, increases. Chicken has gone up 20, uh, 25%, they're saying, or something like that. Gas, they're, they're predicting gas shortages more. Olive oil, uh, they're saying what is was the bad thing about olive oil is the people who eat the olive, olive oil might start um, panic buying the olive oil. What I did, I saw this guy, I was in Walmart, and he was going through the store with four of these. And he looked like, to me, he looked like somebody who maybe owned a restaurant and stuff. And at that time, these were $9.99, and I bought three one day and another one the next day. So I don't have any olive oil, but I will be getting some olive oil. Salmon or salmon, whatever you want to say. Okay, I got to tell you what happened. So, Rhoda, what happened? Well, something happened. Something happened between yesterday and today. Now, where's that? Not everybody has freezers in their dining room. This is crazy. I bought... This rockfish, this is a pound for $2.99, and this salmon for $2.99, we call it salmon, for $2.99. Today, I went in there, and it's $5.99. Okay, that is 
a 100% increase. Instead of getting these two for $6, you get one. And it can be a bit, so it can be a bit uh, tricky because, you know, they have two for the price of one. So you're really getting 50% off each one. But in that case, that is just 100% increase within one day from yesterday to today. It may have been their old inventory. So what I did is I bought no less than recently 10 bags of this stuff. I bought some for my son because I had done this video that uh, seafood might possibly, uh, people steal seafood, seafood this, seafood that. And I thought, I can't really imagine. Well, guess what? In one day in that one store. And then I told you guys when I was shopping the whole frozen food section, there was no fish. So I'm thinking about this. I haven't done anything yet. Uh, pork coffee. So corn, beef, chicken, gas, olive oil, salmon, uh, pork, and coffee. Shortages be expected in price increases. So they're saying what you want to do is you want to prep you want to grow food and you want to cook, no eating out. Because these price increases are going to go to the restaurants and then when you go out is going to affect the price of food. So like a nice hamburger now is between six and $11. Everything is $10. A, a torpedo sandwich is $10. Um, everything is $10, $10, $10. So I bought, um, um, uh, a tomato plant for a dollar and I thought here in San Diego there's no excuse we can grow food year around so even if you have to grow the food indoors you have to do it you have to learn you have to build your prep just one or two cans a day at a time and uh, you have to grow food and stop eating out another thing is is over-the-counter medication it turns out that the APIs are made in China and produced in India. And so um, they are saying your um, preps, uh, like your over-the-counter medicine, like cough syrup, cough drops. You know, a Sudafed cough syrup or Robitussin DM can really save you to start getting a nasal drip. Um, I had sleeping pills, uh, there, you know, anything, aspirin, Tylenol, just start picking up one or two. It's really going to save your life. The top 10 prep, preps is medicine. Okay. So, okay. So now, no, no, no. The year of the, the shortages, supply disruptions. Okay. We've seen those, but they're saying these random cyber attacks, there's been 40 and this is not the end of it. This is only the beginning. Um, buying frenzies. Now the problem with the buying frenzies is the buying frenzies in the other countries can um, affect us. I mean, you know, we've seen, I think it was Shangri-La, there was a, a buying frenzy. Um, and so they call it the Worldwide Food Forum or something like that. So the, the supplies are figured worldwide. So one of, one of these countries, uh, they're saying expect food shortages in Europe and America. We've always been pretty safe. But, you know, you can't really think about it. You have to say, okay, I'm just going to do what I can. I'm going to have cash, credit, and a passport. Gas, a car, gas, and a weapon, if I can. Okay, so now there's another problem with the uh, transport disruptions, fewer trained truckers. What does that mean? What they want is military trained truckers. Why? I guess to protect the transport. Another problem is this summer, they're planning on lots of people have been cooped up and they want to go on trips. And so they're saying that the truckers are going to keep their trucks uh, topped off. They buy diesel, but um, you know, this higher demand for gas and fuel could cause shortages and an increase in price. 
generally when the consumption is up, the price goes down, but now that is not working that way. It's opposite. So, um, okay, so now, so um, this makes sense to me of fewer military trained truckers because do you remember uh, after 9-11, I was working in this affluent neighborhood doing hair, getting all the people guarding the, the planes. What they did is they put plain closed policemen, usually retired, um, on the planes and they would fly like a million miles in no time. And uh, I had to keep them looking sharp, which was no problem. But um, so it will be the same thing. You know, there's going to be these military uh, trained people in the trucks. Okay, we've had problems with the processing plants. You know, the people had the COVID. Um, the, the farmers couldn't get grain to, to uh, the, the farmers couldn't get the, the beefs or the porks to the processing plants and they kept having to feed them and it caused all kinds of problems. So um, now there's another one, slow consumer buying. Okay, people don't have as much money, and so that causes all kinds of problems because a lot of people just don't have that much money. Okay, now this is a bad one. Products are being held back in anticipation of higher prices. And also the just-in-time just delivery system could fail. So what they're doing is they're delivering just enough food, you know, that is needed in the stores. And when that system fails, then, you know, no toilet paper or wipe your you-know-what. I really don't mind chamomile tea. So products are being um, held back for higher pre uh, prices. All price. Yeah, prices. Also, there is a lack of workers, like in the production companies and stuff, and all across everything. Uh, you know, I went, I go up and I walk every day, and one of the, the nice little girls um, in McDonald's told me, I want to quit my job. I go, why? Don't quit your job. You need your job. She goes, I can't stand it. I go, what happened? She goes, this lady called me a racist. I go, what'd you do to her? He goes, she goes, I didn't do anything. She was speaking Spanish and I didn't understand what she wanted. And I said, just a minute, let me go get someone. And the person didn't come right away. And the lady got irate and was, you know, like really mean and awful. And then after so many minutes, she goes, what is your excuse? I speak English. I was born in this country. Why don't you speak Spanish? I thought that was lack of workers maybe also if people feel it is too dangerous or if they're too uh, harassed so okay so now they have credited russian hackers with the colonial pipeline ransom attack they're saying it was the russians not, i don't know about that that's just what i heard okay so They're saying we might want to get small solar operated gener generators. I think that is a good thing. And they're saying, you know, as these utilities keep going up, if you have a little solar generated, a little generator powered by solar, you can use that. What I'm doing, and you guys have seen me doing it, I am just not home. I am never home. Like right now I have the doors and the windows, you know, the door open and it's nice in here. When I lived in the bad area, oh, there was no way I had my doors uh, open. Are you kidding? Okay, there's another problem, the grid going down. Okay, so if the grid goes down, that's gonna be really bad. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. Okay, now some more shortages. Computer chips. So if you think in your back of your mind you might need some of these computer chips, Get them now because the problem is they're not going to be available. Plastics going up 40%. Okay, so when the plastic goes up, everything in the plastics is going to go up. So what we better do is start saving our plastics. Palm oil, not like oil oil, but the palm oil is used in um, food processing, chocolate, um, 
So um, there's, there's a shortage. Lumber, okay, the price of lumber is bad because we need lumber to build everything. And I heard something funny, uh, I was on the radio and uh, I guess someone was driving down the road with like a big truck full of lumber and somebody said, show off. Okay, so chlorine shortages. So if you have a pool, but also if you use bleach, you want to pick up a few leeches every now and then because they're expecting no bleach. Okay, and then power outages. So what we want to do is we want to use, we want to reduce the consumption of power as much as we possibly can. So out here we have fires. Am I going to be packing my freezers full of thousands of dollars of meat? I'm not really going that direction. Uh, you know, we had the um, floods, the reservoir had a miscommunication uh, with the computer and it flooded some houses. Well, my food storage would have been 90% okay because it was all in cans. Also, I don't have to worry about gnats, any of that kind of stuff. So the food storage is a way of life. So um, I had this neighbor, and I told you guys about it. He was young. He was in the military. I mean, really young, and he had five kids. And at the beginning of the month, his whole house would be pulled pulled. pulled pile full of this these uh foods these these are good enough you know just go pull one i'm gonna make this one tonight i have some ricotta and some mozzarella cheese and i'll just sprinkle a little bit on top and i buy these when i can get them for a dollar and you know those are pretty good maybe i don't have six to eleven dollars for um a nice hamburger so i'll just have some hamburger uh, meal here and stroganoff is good and then there was a good recipe using this in tuna casserole so I'll be making that pretty soon okay so now I want to talk to you about food storage okay so everybody has a I am not going to stand in my kitchen and can I want to make sure I have food. So I have two examples. One is some yellowfin tuna, and one is this, I accidentally bought this. Uh, this is plant-based tuna. So say my relative or friend is really hungry, and they, they come and they need some food. So this is the better choice. This costs more money, but if you have carefully stockpiled this, I will eat this. But someone's really hungry. Oh, well, that plant-based food is fine. Yeah, that's fine. Save it for your family. Uh, chicken, you can eat this right out of the can. The house floods, the power goes off. It's going to be okay. I have this cheese that I bought marked down, and I can make lots of macaroni and cheese out of that. These are nice. I eat these right out of the 